What is up guys, it's Matt from Cornelius Creations and in this video I'm going to show you how to engrave metal with your Dremel or any type of rotary tool. Let's go! Now there are a few ways to engrave but the easiest way that I want to teach you guys today is by using a rotary tool like the Dremel or a Fordham which I use. For the demonstration here we will actually be using diamond burrs. Now you can use some other type of burrs like sometimes stone and carbide burrs, but the most easiest way is by using diamonds. I just picked up a cheap set like this from Harbor Freight and it works okay for what I'm doing. And the project we're gonna be using it on is this right here. Now this is actually going as a Christmas present. If you turn it around, I'm gonna put a name right here in the middle. The way I'm gonna be doing this is by using a vinyl sticker, which I'm not showing you how to do because I just wanna show you guys the engraving today. So let's get started. Here's the vinyl piece with the name Lily, which we will actually be using to stencil to the Christmas ornament. Now here's the ornament right here. You can see one side already has something on it. But what I wanna do is to get a permanent marker after I put the stencil on there and trace it out with a permanent marker. That way I can start engraving. Now before you engrave any type of metal, you wanna make sure you put alcohol on it and clean it real good. Now just a little note, this is more of tin than it is metal, but the same rule applies. And like I said, we're not gonna cut very deep. Before you start any piece of metal, I always clean it, not just because the vinyl I'm sticking to it, but just because I want it to look clean when I'm doing it to make sure all the dirt and grime is off of it. So we just wanna clean it here with the alcohol. Let it evaporate. There we go. Before we get started, I know that most people don't have a vinyl cutter machine on hand, but I'm not showing you this tutorial for you to follow it. I'm just simply showing you this so you can get inside your creative process of learning what you can do with metal and engraving here. So I'm just doing this name as an example to you guys. So let's get started. Okay, there it is. And this is how it looks right here. So the next thing is taking this permanent marker right here and tracing over the exposed areas of the tin or metal here and then pulling the vinyl off. Like I said, I'm just showing you guys this part so you will get in the process of thinking for yourselves. So I'm gonna do this and then we will start engraving. Now we got the permanent marker on there, which I'm sure it's not gonna stick too well, so I'm gonna have to be very careful while I'm engraving this right here to make sure I don't smudge it. Okay, we have had time to dry this a little bit. Now let's carefully pull back the vinyl. Now the next thing is to take one of these sharp diamond burrs right here, and we're gonna go right in there, along the edges here, and just lightly score this out, not engrave and grill deeply, but just scratching the surface. Okay guys, we wanna make sure we have two things, and that is a pair of safety glasses right here. Now, full frame goggles probably wouldn't hurt either, because we're gonna have a lot of nasty dust. Now, also be sure to wear a dust mask. This is a must have. You don't wanna be breathing in all the fine debris from the metal we have here. Okay guys, this is gonna be pretty tedious. I could have got probably a better example to use, but I just wanted to show you guys a real life application here. The burr I'm gonna be using for the most part is this long diamond burr right here. Now I think the ball, and this is the smallest I have, I need a little bit smaller. These are gonna be pretty big, so for the most part, I'm gonna be using this for the entirety of the video. Also, before you start this, you wanna make sure that you're spinning at high RPMs. My Dremel 3000 goes up to 32,000 RPMs, and my Fordham here goes up to 18,000. Now, I'm still using my Fordham because I just, I like it better, but for you guys, you wanna get as fast as you can go. Now, when we do this, we're lightly just gonna scratch it along the surface right here, right here, just going right along there, getting just the surface of it. Now you don't want to go too deep, you want your cuts to be even. If you guys haven't caught my video on how to wood carve and power carve, I teach a lot of techniques that I'll be doing right here. So you guys be sure to check that video out. I will leave a link in the description below. Let's get started.
I may move this GoPro in a second because it's really difficult to do this thing with this GoPro on here. Okay, I'm gonna have to remove this GoPro. This is just too much on me. Okay guys, you notice something? When I'm doing this, I'm turning as I'm going. Now this would be good to have in a vise because it would help actually for it to come out a lot cleaner. But if you guys notice, I'm going like this when I carve it. I'm going along the edges, just like this, and then turning it. And I'm trying not to turn too much with my hand. You'll see that a little bit, but for the most part, I just want it pretty solid and just turning it with my hands. Okay, everything's turning out pretty nice here. I'm gonna finish this L up, and then go back over my work and smooth everything out to take away some of the rough spots. Okay guys, here we go. Now this isn't perfect. I had to stay out of the way because my cameras. Now that we're closer, you can see some of the imperfections, but what we're gonna do is go back in there and just go one way in one direction, probably to the right, and just rough everything out again, just very lightly. And what I wanna do, and here's where a lot of people make mistakes at, is that they just go back and forth, but now we're just gonna go one direction and even everything out because I may have a deeper scratch here than I do up here. So I wanna make everything even and that's gonna create a nice effect. And I'm gonna go along the corners right here too and make it just a tad bit thicker and um, take all the imperfections out like the, on the top of that Y there. I got, the Dremel got away from me there. So, or excuse me, the Fordham got away from me there. So let's get started. So like I said, what we're doing is that we're moving to the right and what this is doing is fading in the scratches because the reason it looks so rough right here if my camera is picking it up right here is because it's uneven scratches. I want my scratches to be going in one direction with it all even and when you do that, it's like fading in hair if you're cutting hair, which I've never cut hair, <laughs> that, might, that might be a bad example, but you just fade it in, fade everything in by going to the right and just put some good even scratches. Now that is a tip not everybody will tell you. Go one direction, even out everything in one direction and, and after you get it faded in right, it's gonna look great. Okay guys, that was pretty intense. You can probably see my face is a little red. I put my dust mask on and had some tedious details to work out on this thing. So I turned off my camera for a little bit because it took me a little bit longer than expected. But here it is. And I think this turned out pretty nice. Now granted, I could have took my time and made this look a little bit better, but for the sake of the video, I think this is good enough. So anyways, when you guys start this, you may want to start with something bigger. 
And I mentioned earlier in the video about all the different diamond burrs. Well, I only ended up using one because this was so small. So you guys could use a ball in burr or um, the cone shaped burr and just kind of play it by ear. And like I said in the video, this isn't for you to copy. You can if you would want to, but this is mainly for you guys to see and get into the creative process of doing this yourself. Hopefully you learn something from this that really helped empower you. That's what I'm really going for with these videos. And with that being said, this is a light scratch engraving. Now I could have got crazy and get, got real deep in there, but I didn't want that. I just wanted something just real light. So I think we hit our mark here. Now I could have went beyond this and showed you guys a way to smooth this out, but that's a different tutorial for a different time because that's really high up in advance and I need to work on it myself before I show you guys. So anyway guys, I hope this helped you. And if you guys have any questions, let me know and subscribe because I should have some more tutorials coming out. They take a little while to do. This video today, I've been working on all day just to get these different camera angles and stuff and pack it down to just a you know 10 to 15 minutes long. So anyway guys, I hope you have a great day and let me know what you would like to see next or if you have any questions. I hope you guys have a great day for the 10th time. Bye-bye. <laughs>